welcome the one and only, none other than, he's the Premier of Victoria. Would you make welcome Mr John Kane? Bob? Bob Jane. Uh, no, 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 sorry. John Payne. John, uh, we just wanted to ask you, uh, are you, uh, do you listen to the Punter the Punter? No, I hear some bad tips from you. You're very, you're very busy on Saturday mornings, I can understand. But the other question I wanted to ask is, do you drink this Leary? Leary and others. And others. He's a, he's a Democratic I'm uh, Lord Mayor, Consul General, and other distinguished guests, my fellow guests perhaps I should say, and uh, introducers. Thank you for that warm introduction. Uh, this like a cultural city associated with the presentation of this program. I think this weekend in the evening try something uh, Italian, which I'm told goes something like this. Uh, one Divertimento, which I think a loose translation would tell you in Oz, have a good weekend. And I therefore have much pleasure in declaring the fest of hope. Well, the purpose of this morning's meeting was to uh, indicate uh, to the people of Victoria the extent to which our housing policies, as enunciated by Ian Cathy, who's with me this morning, uh, will affect uh, and provide jobs in this state. The focus of our policies uh, is to ensure that as far as possible, those policies uh, will create jobs. That's where the emphasis will be. And I'm delighted that Alf Zeno, Secretary of the Building Workers Industrial Union, is here with us this morning uh, to say how he finds uh, these policies and uh, the emphasis that is given in those policies uh, might affect uh, the people with whom he's concerned, uh, the people in the building industry. Alf, delighted to have you here this morning, and perhaps you might indicate uh, to those assembled uh, how you find these policies and how it's going to affect the building industry and your workers. Certainly. Well, sorry. Ooh, well, yeah, right. Now, we'll cut it there. Labor government's proud of its cost-cutting record in Victoria and so it's sensitive to criticism in this area. Now a group of government staffers has spent two weeks working through liberal promises to throw the waste and reckless charges back at the opposition leader, Mr Jeff Kennett. The Premier, Mr Kane, says today's costings prove that the liberal promises are nothing more than a marketing exercise. I out of what I think is a grab bag of, of promises without any regard to anything else, just I think tested interest groups to see what particular groups uh, uh, want and uh, the, the failure to properly cost them and indicate what each will uh, incur by way of cost I think is evidence of that. But Your success has not come easily. Four of them from Victoria and I think you're all very proud of Lester Ellis. The last 50th birthdays I think is good for... And I'm going to now present, get off, present Lester with, with a wall crack to commemorate this occasion. Commemorates this occasion. And I hope an occasion he'll remember when the people of Melbourne paid their tribute to Lester Ellis, a great performance by a great Victorian young man from the Western Suburbs. I'm sure he'll do it courteously and you would want to hear him. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, I'm very happy to win that fight for, for Australian boxing and hope I can hang on, hang on to it for a little while. And I've got another big fight, say in two months. And it's going to be in Melbourne. I hope I'll be trying my hardest to win it. And I'll choose this reward. Thanks very much. Now, uh, I'm told... At the end of the they weave for 50 miles at night. Well, but he never gave up to the final farewell. The champ showed you gotta give it all. And Melbourne can pay their tribute to a great fighter, Lester Ellis. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm told Shepparton uh, concerned the officials of the union. Now I can say no more than that. That's my understanding of it. That they are concerned about the 
safety and the, uh, the welfare of their members and their vehicles. Does that mean that the, the police were unable to control the picket line? Uh, well, I think you saw the film or knew more about it than I did, I suppose. It meant that there was uh, physical uh, uh, mm. conflict between police and dairy farmers as the police sought to enforce the picket uh, line understandings that you, you advance and you put your case and then if you want to go on you are enabled to go on. <coughs> as the police were enforcing that there was physical differences between them and the dairy farmers who either sat down on the path of the trucks or uh, took some other uh, obstructive uh, action. <coughs> there is no suggestion that the transport workers union drivers are actually in cahoots with the dairy farmers. Well, I've not heard that suggested, no. I've, what's been put, as I understand it, is their concern that appears in their, the document they put out, their concern about the welfare and safety of their members. Is <coughs> the same legislation that uh, was uh, used by the Thompson government back in The Act is the same. Uh, the, uh, uh, the actual proclamation and the particularity of the proclamation, uh, I can't say whether that's the same. Uh, the proclamation uh, relates to... Pardon? Well, yes, it... I mean, in this case, uh, what we're, uh, we're moving, what the, uh, the proclamation refers to is the provision of milk uh, to the public by any producer, a wholesaler, retailer or carrier of milk, and the transport of milk intended for sale. Now, that may have been the words that we used, I don't know, but those are, that's the specific reference in the proclamation under the powers of the Essential Services Act of 1958. And that was the act that was used uh, in 1981. Will you be going overseas now? Oh, yes, I'm not sure when that. I won't be going today, I don't think, in these circumstances, unless it's uh, reason prevails very quickly uh, and the matter's uh, resolved today. What happens if the TWU regards this de declaration as a state of emergency as virtually making them carry milk as a, an, under an act of coercion? I don't think anybody could, that put, could put that interpretation on it, Helen. I don't see how you could. It merely uh, uh, provides a machinery for facilitating the trans... Well, Mr. Kane, having read and tabled the report, what's your view of the picture it paints of the BLF? A lot of matters of concern there, and I think there's two aspects of it. The question of any criminal charges, I've referred to a prosecutor. As soon as a, a recommendation is made, uh, I'll act upon that, whatever the recommendation may be. On the industrial matters, uh, it paints a picture that does concern a lot of people. I think we uh, would never condone uh, what's been revealed in some of that report, nor would I think most trade unionists or the Trades Hall Council, and we've made that perfectly clear. Uh, we believe that a lot of these things can be overcome by proper and uh, well thought out site agreements on big building jobs before the work commences, and uh, that will be our endeavour in the future. Do you think it uh, casts any aspersions on the union movement generally? Well, I think something rubs off on the movement generally, uh, but I believe that, as I said before, most trade unions would be, cons would be concerned about some of the matters revealed. And I think what we have to be concerned to ensure is that, uh, as far as possible, we create a climate where there's good relations between employers and unions, and that will be our aim. You've said there's a possibility criminal prosecutions may follow. Can you give any, any indication on who might be involved in those prosecutions? Well, there's a number of recommendations made in the report, but uh, what I've done uh, upon receipt of the report some four weeks ago was to ask a prosecutor to examine those matters and report to me as soon as possible. There's a number of persons mentioned in the report and some that were outside the terms of reference uh, about whom it's said uh, some consideration should be given to proceedings. There's a possibility then that the Secretary, Norm Gallagher, may face criminal charges? Look, all I can say is that the report's made recommendations, those are being examined by a prosecutor and it's a matter for him to report back to me as soon as possible. Some of the criticism made in Parliament today by the opposition has been that if given the evidence in the report, if you're not prepared to deregister the BLF, you would never be prepared to deregister. Dramatic drop in numbers of days lost. And I think and, uh, we take some credit for that. Be planning and sound.
We had a lot of holes in the ground around the geriatric complex, the eastern city in, in spending cap. Geelong was a declining city. And in just three years, Geelong has benefited from the economic recovery based right across this state more than any other Victorian city. More than any other Victorian city. And I think uh, you all know that the whole look and feel of Geelong is changing. Just driving through today, the, the activity and, and what's happening there uh, speaks for itself. And it wasn't there. And of course, the, it isn't just the Liberals that are running the lie about high taxes and charges, the National Party too. They're all saying it. They've got nothing else to say. And when they run out of that, it's personal abuse. That's the way they're running the show. And I just want to add one other thing. When they talk about taxes and charges, last week's CPI figures uh, provided further proof of the, of the fact that the, this charge about excessive taxes and charges is a myth. What these figures showed was this. In the last 12 months, Victoria's inflation rate uh, was below the national average and the third lowest in the country. Was representation for women in the next parliament, regardless of the results. Can't have it. Haven't got the candidates. Have a look through the list tonight in the paper and see how many women are standing for the Liberal Party. You can't look through and see how many are standing for the National Party. They don't have any. I ask you to support them. We've shown we can do the job and we want your support to re-endorse what we've been doing for the last three years and go on doing that and more for Geelong and Victoria over the next four years. Thank you very much. That's better. Mr. Kennett. Are we rolling? Mr. Kane, Mr. Kennett accuses the uh, National Party of doing deals, and today Mr. McDonald says that. Uh, uh, Mr Kennett isn't helping the chances of coalition. What do you make of it? Well, there is a rather nasty fight going on between them. If it's not about coalition, it'll be about something else. Uh, they fought for a month over a seat up in the North Eastern for two months. Uh, uh, I just don't understand how they can suggest that they could work. They go on fighting the way they do about all manner of things. It's just a nonsense to suggest uh, that the only alternative to a Labor government, of course, uh, being a coalition, would work. Mr Macdonald said today that he thought that uh, Mr Kennett was delivering you an electoral gift. Is that the way you see it? Well, they'll go on fighting between themselves, I suppose, and I think the electorate has its own views about coalitions. It wants stable, strong, one-party government that goes on uh, providing stability, and uh, I think they will see that uh, the alternative provides everything except stability and except progress for Victoria. So I guess uh, we've been given a gift by both of them, but the electorate is learning early just what the prospects are. The original plan that uh, a deal has been done on preferences, is that correct? Will your preferences go to the Nationals? Well, after the nominations close, and that's the day, the party will make a decision and an announcement will be made as to where our preferences go. It's a matter for the party to decide. I don't discuss what goes on between uh, party officers or party leaders or anybody else. The announcement will be made at the appropriate time. Would you be surprised? I think you should wait and see what will happen and then make your own judgment about where they go. Uh, there's very many reasons why preferences are allocated at certain times. And uh, wait and see what the result is. Uh, I think sometime before the weekend you'll find out. Excuse me. Thank you. Mr. Kane, I... But it must be the headphones. 